In this video, we're going to talk about potential meters. Now, a potential meter is essentially, well, it includes a very long resistance wire over here. Okay, so let's call this wire, or let's say this wire has a length L and some resistance R L. Okay, and so how a potential meter works, essentially, it has a galvanometer over here. Okay, so a gal think of a galvanometer as just a very precise ammeter, and there is a movable contact over here. So when we use a potential meter, we are always trying to look for something called the balance point. And so just imagine I'm going to take this pointer, this movable contact, I'm going to move it left and right, and I'm going to do so until my galvanometer shows what we call a null deflection, which is essentially saying that there is no current through the galvanometer. No current. And so the balance point is that one special point where this happens. So let's assume that the balance point occurs when the movable contact is at J over here. And so now what we need to understand is what is so special about this balance point. Now, if there is no current here, then the potential at J, Vj, must equal to the potential at B, Vb. <clears throat> but we can also see that on this side, these are equipotential points. So Vx equals to Va, you could say, but that's not really important. And uh, so what I can then conclude is that the potential difference across Xj and the potential difference across Ab is the same. So Vxj equals to Vab. Pretty nice. So what we then do from here, because there is no current here, there must also be no current here. And so essentially, I can draw a line across like so and study the bottom circuit which, and the top circuit separately. The goal typically is to find the potential difference AB. AB could be anything. It could be something that you're trying to measure. But you see, because now that I have the balance point and I know that Vxj equals to Vab, I can simply study the top circuit to figure out what Vab will be. And we can do that using the potential divider principle. So what we need to do, we need to find the potential difference across this wire first. And so since we said this wire was uh, had a resistance of RL, then of course, V wire is simply equal to uh, RL over RL plus R. Okay, that's the total resistance in this top circuit multiplied by E. And then we can use the fact that in a uniform wire like so, the resistance is proportional to the length. We have seen this before when we saw R equals to rho L over A. And so we can figure out what Vxj is simply by taking the ratio Lxj over the length of the wire L multiplied by V wire, which we have calculated earlier. And then of course, Vab simply equals to Vxj. And so this is essentially how we use a potential meter to measure potential differences like the one here across AB.